Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I have the week two prompt, and the week two prompt is Galaxy. I thought about doodling, I thought about doing collage, but I think this idea is more in line with what I think about when I think about Galaxy. I looked the word up in the dictionary, my favorite thing to do is look stuff up in the dictionary, and it talked a lot about the Milky Way. I remember many years ago, when we lived in a large city of half a million people, the Milky Way or part of a comet, Halley's Comet, passed um, above us and there were a lot of shooting stars and falling stars and we were very excited to see them. Living in a large city where there's lots of lights, it's very hard to see the stars. Living in the country down a dirt road where there's no street lights out here, it's much easier to see the stars. And that's what I think of when I think of galaxy, that our galaxy is made up of billions and billions of stars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a paper star, paper bead star. Here are my two examples. This one right here. Now these are all, I think, each one of these is a single piece of paper, or paper strip to make one bead. There's that one. That's, they're all single layers. And this is the second one. So it's just basic beads. There's no special thing to be done. And I'll prove it to you because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful paper bead with just computer paper, pencil, let me get my ruler down here, ruler, glue, toothpicks, there's my toothpicks, and scissors, need a pair of scissors of some sort. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I do is I decide what, what the length is that I want the star, the star parts of the stars to be. So let me see if I can measure these as closely as I can. These are one and a half. All right, so we'll start with beads that are one and a half. Let's see, is this one one and a half? Yep, they're all one and a half. All right, so the long ones, the, the north, south, east, west, these guys are one and a half inches, and these are all one inch. Not hard. These if I remember correctly, are one and a half, one inch, and half inch beads. So this is one and a half at the top, the bottom, and the sides. The white are one inch, and then the ones that are in the middle are half inch beads. And then I put a pearl in the middle of this one. This one just has a type of a filigree bead in it. All right, so let's get started. So you need your ruler and your pencil. Now I'm using an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, but I wanna get the maximum amount out of it. So I'm gonna turn it this way to where the 11 inches is. And then I'm going to put my ruler down here. And I'm going, I want my stars to be one and a half inches. Oh, I already broke the tip off my pencil. Sharpened it just for this and already broke it off. All right, so this needs to be one and a half, three, four and a half. So that'll make two, four. Oh, so I only need four of the two inch, or one and a half inch beads. So that's all I'm going to measure for there. Then I'm going to turn my paper around and I've got to measure the same way here so that. When I turn my ruler, I will have double the amount of beads. So we have four and a half. We'll go one, two, one and a half. That's one inch, one and a half inches. And then down to one inch, that'll be one and a half. All right, so these are going to be the long beads. So what you do is you take a ruler, you make your tick marks at the top and the bottom of the paper. Then you take your ruler and you start in the, let me push this up here so you can see better. Start in the far corner here, 
tilt your ruler and line it up with your tick mark that you made or your little mark you made at here. So this should be a one and a half inch strip of paper. Then just move the ruler over. Make sure you stay firm here on the end and all you have to do is swivel the ruler to match up with your mark. Put pressure here. Swivel the ruler around this way and just a little bit over this way to make sure it's pointed. And there you have one, two, three. And then I, oops, sorry, I need to do four. Sorry, forgot about the fourth bead. Um, this one seems a little out of sync here, so this should be one and a half. And it's two inches, so let me do this one and a half. One and one and one half. That one's just a wee bit too big, I think by half an inch. All right, so let's take this, move this here. All right, so now I should have one, two, three, four beads. So I'm gonna cut these off of here because I need the straight edge because I need to make more beads. And for this one, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the one inch beads. So let's measure four inches from the end. There we go. We've got, so basically that's going to make two, four, six, Eight. And then go back down here and do two, four, six, and the end is a given. All right, so let me get rid of this extra little. Oh, <laughs> my eraser doesn't work. Hang on. All right, I have my favorite little eraser here. So this is the little half inch one that's got to go. All right, so again, the end here is where you need to start. Put your ruler there. Match it up with the line you made here for one inch. And then you can swivel it around a little bit. That's two. Three. Four, five, oops, six, seven, the last one is eight. All right, so I have eight one inch beads and I have four two-inch beads. So you, like I said in a previous video, you can cut these on the guillotine, you can cut these on a paper slicer of your choice. I just do the scissors because for this it's just easier. Now if I cut straight beads where there are two beads, I do use the paper cutter because I find that's a little more accurate to make those kinds of beads. All right, so here are the two-inch beads right there. And now we'll do the one inch. Uh, I forgot one piece of equipment that you will need and actually you don't even need a piece of equipment but a one inch to one and a half inch paper cutter, paper cutter, uh, punch, sorry, would be lovely if you had a paper punch. That's a circle or some kind of a scalloped edge. Circle for the back piece to hold it together. Because that's what you're going to glue everything on is this back piece right here. And you can make it match whatever color beads you're using. I usually would try to punch out either cardstock that matched or if I had enough of the printed paper, I would punch out a little 
a little one from there. All right, so now you remember one side of the paper has pencil mark on it and the other side doesn't. You want to roll with the side that does not have the pencil mark. Now I'm not erasing these and I'm making these very plain because I want you to see how easy it is to do with basic supplies. All right, let me go get the punch real quick. Okay, I remember now why I can't find a one inch punch is because I don't have one. I broke it, but the next best size for this because it's not that large of a star will be the three quarter inch. I think that'll be plenty, plenty large enough. So I'm gonna take this and then I'm going to find some white cardstock scraps. And I'm gonna punch two of them because I wanna glue one on top of the other. Now, if you're gonna use pretty paper, cut two like this and then two with the nice paper on the back, the front and the back, and that'll make it even more sturdy. Okay. Ooh. All right. I'm going to glue those together and set them aside. All right. So let's see. How big of a hole? I don't want a large hole. You don't really want a large hole in these things. So I'm going to um, use one of the smallest paper rollers that I have in diameter. I think this is the smallest one that I've got. So I'm gonna use this. Except for, I have two inch paper, so I need to use this one for the two inchers. All right, I've got this one here for the two inch paper. Last time, if you remember, I um, would take this and cut it off. I really don't care this time. Doesn't matter to me. Put my anchor bead on. It keeps the metal pieces closed. Yeah, well, we don't want that to slide out. That's not good. Here we go. Then I'm gonna kind of pinch it and roll. And then I'm just going to roll my bead this isn't a two inch bead, sorry, it's a one and a half inch bead. Let me make that correct. All right, so there you go. Let me roll this down so the glue's ready. And to make sure that you don't see the pencil lines, make sure that you don't do it on the side where the you can see the pencil line. So there is the one and a half inch bead. All right, so I'm going to fast forward rolling the one and a half inch beads and the one inch beads so we can get that part over with. Okay, now that all the beads are rolled, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take glue and I'm going to really put it on here pretty thick. Now you can use E6000 or you can use some kind of tacky glue. That's really thick. You need thick glue. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your bead and you're going to think north, south, east, and west. So we have north. Um, this one. South and you can butt them right up against each other. And then we need east and west. And they need to dry for a little while. So once you laid the beads on here, you don't really want to mess around with it too much. You just, except for now, I'm going to pick a piece of glue off of this one. Okay, so you just want to do them north, south, east, west, and leave them leave them to sit. I'm going to move this so you can see it better in the camera. Um, leave them to sit for, well, I usually leave mine overnight. So 
<coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place more beads in here while I'm waiting for the others to dry because I want to see how many I can get in here. I want to, I would like to get two in here, but I don't know if I'm going to get, I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze two in there. So I think maybe I will have to pull these out. And that might give me a little extra room. Ooh, it's already sticking. A little extra room to try to cram two beads in there. Because I want to use two of these other beads that I rolled. So let's see. Let me stick a little glue on the bottom of this. Maybe. All right, come on. I filled you up the other day. All right. So I'm going to stick this one here. And I'm going to see if I can get another one in that other open space there. And the thing is, every time you start out with a formula about how you need the anchor beads and then you just kind of have to wedge in the others as best you can because honestly sometimes you roll a little tight or a little looser with one bead as opposed to another um, one end looks nicer than the other it's a little thinner so it's easier to wedge inside in between the bigger beads e -ah. And moving the others out helped give me room. Now see, I don't know if you can see this, but the one end looks a little thinner than the other. That's this end, and this looks fatter. So I want to take the thinner end and whoops, wedge that in there. See if I can get it in there without creating too much fuss. Eh, voila. All right, let's see. This one's a little thinner. Put a little dab on there. Whoops. Maybe I could do it on this one and get this one started. And then I'll put it here. And then the other one here. Now, sometimes you may have to wiggle things around a little bit and move them. Move this one out. Okay, so these guys are all in here and there's a little more room so I can kind of mash down on them a little bit. And there, whoops, there's your star. And I know it's not in the center of the screen, but if I move it, I'm afraid I'll mess it up. Sit for a few hours and let it set up. And then I'll come back and I will finish the rest of it. And it should. Okay, so it's been more than 24 hours and my star is dried. See, nice and dry and pretty sturdy. Although, you know, when you only put a portion of the bead onto the little disc, you're only going to get so much stability out of it. All right, so what you're going to need for this portion is either one or two pairs of needle nose pliers. I learned how to twist wire from, I went to a bead class and I learned how to do it this way. If the wire is soft enough, you can do it with your hands, hold with this and twist with your hands. You can do either one, whatever you're most comfortable with. Then the next thing you're gonna need is some way to cut the wire. You can use these wire cutters. All this, this was not purchased in a craft store. This is one of my husband's tools, but don't tell him. These were purchased, I think, individually at either Hobby Lobby, Michaels, probably AC Moore. One of those three. I can't remember. I've had them a very long time. All right, so then I got that. And then the second pair of pliers. You're going to need some wire. Now, I ordered this zebra wire from all earrings and supplies .etsy.com. But you can get this in any craft store. It may not be the brand Zebra, but you can get any silver coated, this is silver coated copper wire. If you wore the finish off of it, you would see it's copper colored in the bottom or underneath. Um, and get it, I think this is a 22 gauge, and this is perfect for this. It's not too, 
not too hard to twist and not so tiny that the minute you twist it one too many times it snaps off because believe me I have done that more than a few times. Okay, so then we need also a ruler. All right, so let me bring you down closer so you can see what it is I'm fixing to do because this is a little tricky. All right, so I want to put wire through this top bead here, the north bead and the south bead. And it's going to go through here all the way and across the middle section that has nothing in it all the way down to here. And there's a reason why, and I'll show you. So I'm going to cut off, let me see how, this is two inches plus two inches. That's how long the beads are. So it's about three and a half. I think I'll do five inches of wire. So I'm going to measure off five inches of wire. Even if I measure too much, it's better to have too much than too, too little and have to do it all over again. You can use these because this wire is not that heavy of a gauge wire, or you can use a, a nice pair of heavy duty scissors. I've done the Tim Holtz scissors. <laughs> all right, so what you need to do is make sure your wire is very straight. Well, it's a little too much closeness. There we go. You need to make sure your wire is very straight. Okay, so what you're going to do, since you have a hole in your bead, you're going to take your wire and you're going to feed it through here and you're going to make sure that your wire will skip through to the other hole. You might have to nudge and encourage, force it in there. And there we go, there's the wire through the other side. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can make yourself a little loop over a toothpick or something else that's roundish and it needs to be small roundish and I don't have a, the jewelry tool I need so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bead curler and I'm going to put this around and fold it in half because I need to twist it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it so that the wire twists all the way around the wool, all the way around. You probably could have used this for your top. And this is not, it does not need to be perfect, but you do need to make sure that your wire is mashed down so you don't snag it on anything. All right, so here we have our wire and this is going to snag on the paper. So let me try to smooth this out or you can cut it off, whatever you prefer. It's up to you. There's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of making it look nice. All right, so you can put this in the bottom and that gives you the little eyelet or the little hole. Now, if you wanted this to be the bottom, wait, for this to be the bottom of your item, you can put any kind of a jump ring and a charm on the bottom or a little crystal. You can decorate it or what I do when I don't want to do any other decorating is I take my pliers and I kind of mash the circle and then I see if I can mash it small enough. And then I try to drag it through the bead as best I can. I have a feeling I know what's stopping it. It's that wire. I did not shut I did not cut off. Yep, it's snagging and it's not straight, so that's not helping any either. All right. Let's see if I did it this time. And I pull it through there and make sure it's wedged inside there. And you can look at the tip of it. You know, some of my stars, you'll see the, the very end of it. Some of them, you won't see it at all. But the main point of having this is so that you can make a loop up here to hang your um, star on some kind of a hanger. All right, let me go get the proper tool to make this next part. Here's the next part. These, I can't remember what the name of them is. Um, they're round. And they're jewelry, some kind of a jewelry plier. All right, so the way I learned how to do it is you take these, and yes, these are along the same line as the others. You take this and you wrap, you wrap your wire around it and then put it around the neck, cross it over like a cross, and pull. 
Then you take the other wires, other pliers wires, and you can do it this way or there is another way to do it with two pairs of pliers. And this makes it have more even pressure and it does look a little more professional. It looks a lot nicer. And it's, either sh it's easier to shove down in that hole too. Right, so I'm gonna nip this off towards the back of the star because I don't want the sharp part to be in the front. I'm going to mash down the end of the wire a little bit. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to insert it back into there. There. So there's your little circle at the top. Nothing at the bottom so you can barely see it. Now what you want to do is you want to take something because at, at the reason you want it could be anything. Anything round or whatever you want to use decorative to glue it. Now this part I would use E6000 to glue. I I have a marble, uh, I guess it's a marble bead of some sort, a yellow bead, and I'm going to glue that in the middle. I like using E6000, pop off very easily. Just put a little blob in the middle. Don't do a lot because remember, any screw ups are visible from the other side of the star. Then you just put that in there and then you uh, put the lid on. I should clean it off so it's easier to open next time around put the lid back on right away and let this sit. I would let it sit yet another 24 hours. All right, so I wanted you to see some of the stars that I have done in the past because like a like um, stars in the sky, no two stars are alike and your paper stars should not all look alike either. Everything should be different. So I'm going to show you how I have them currently. And you, those of you who, who know me and who watch my um, videos know that I'm a nut about storing stuff according to color. So that's what I've done with my stars. They're all done according to color. Um, let's see. Let's start with some of the purple paper ones that are a little not totally purple purple. This is a double star where I have nice something nice on the back so you know in case it rotates you can see it and it looks nice on the front and the back but what I did was I added more onto the um, more onto the front but if it flips over it doesn't matter because the back looks just as nice and these are some kind of metal doodads I picked up in one of the hobby stores this one I did not use any metal in it. I had enough paper left over when I rolled these beads that I made very, very small little beads. Took another one that was left over from something else that was a purple cutter, a purple color, and set it upright in there and then surrounded the little bitty ones around the middle. If all you can afford is that, then do it because this is cheap. Take a toothpick, make them a very skinny piece of paper and you'll have a lovely little darn near seed bead. And again, this is one there I did. Um, these are two strips of paper that are two inch, but the back only has two strips, one and a half inch star on the back. But they're double sided so that if, you know, they turn around, you can see one side over the other. All right, let me put these back because if I don't, I'll be knocking stuff over. All right, so these are purple and white or lavender and white, whatever you want to call the color. And every one of them has a different center, no two are alike. Well, actually, maybe they are. <laughs> maybe these two are, but the centers are different. This is a broken bead, and this, you know, has the disc on the back, it's plain. This is some kind of a metal thing that goes on um, bolo ties and stuff like that. It's a, you know, it's faux silver, I guess. But it's a bead because you can see the hole this side and you can see the hole on this side. And then it has a little silver hanger on it. Um, and, you know, it's just something very simple. It's only one-sided. This one has some kind of a button. I cut the shank off of it. 
Oh wait, is this plastic? No, this is metal. This must have been some kind of a bead or something, or a metal button. If you use um, buttons that are, have shanks on them, all you have to do is take your cutters like this and cut the shank off down to all the way to the bottom of the, the button. This is ceramic tile. They call them tile, ceramic tiles. It's the circle kind. And I did one on the front and one on the back. And this is a double star. It looks the same on the front as it does on the back. So I have a little bit of everything here. Just like the stars that, are, that make up our galaxy, no two stars are alike. Just like snowflakes, no two snowflakes are alike. All right, so that is my interpretation or my take on the word galaxy. Um, lots of stars and shiny things make up the galaxy. And this year, lots of stars and shiny things can make up on, can be on your Christmas tree. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.